Hey everyone, welcome back to the JavaScript Notebook. In this module, we're going to look at another data type called the array. So let's head on over to our Cloud9 IDE and let's pull up our notebook file. So last we left off, we were in the data.js file and recall we were discussing variables. Variables are the most basic form of storing digital information. However, you may have the need to store multiple related items under one title, if you will, or one space. And that's what an array is. So I'm going to move my cursor after the comment on line 40 and come down here and let's create our first array. And it's customary to create the variable object array with the keyword const because the entire array it's not meant to be changed, but items within it can be added and, and subtracted and so on. And we'll see that in a moment. But right now, as always, we're going to define this variable with const and we're going to name it. And the name we'll give to it is New England. OK, next, the assignment operator, as we learned last time. And now we want to assign values to this name New England. However, instead of one, you know that New England has six states. So we want to put six names here, six string items, rather than one value. So we open up with a square bracket. And then inside of the bracket, we open up with quotes because the data type, as I mentioned for New England, we're going to put the name of the states. And our first one will be New Hampshire. Now, that's our first item. We want to move outside of the quotes and then separate the first item with the second item with quotes. I mean, excuse me, not with quotes, with a comma. And now the next one, start with quotes and put Vermont. Get out of that quotes, comma, and continue with the other states. Okay, and then I typed in the rest of the state. So notice again, the first item is New Hampshire in quotes, separated by a comma, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. And then once we're done with that, we want to come to the end of our square bracket and end our thought with a semicolon. And we have now established the array known as New England. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave a space or two here and let's establish another one. Const called grades gets the value of. Now this might be for a class, for example, and we want to use or store multiple values here. So in this array, we want to have data values or data types that are numbers. So no need for quotes here. We want 91, 188, 95, 75, 98. And let's add one more in there for 100. One, two, three, four, five, so we have seven items all separated by commas move outside of the square brackets and put our curly bracket there. Hey, excuse me, not a curly bracket, our, our um, semicolon, excuse me. All right, so now you may be thinking, well, all right, what if I need to access information? Uh, if you recall, we console.log score in lives before and we retain the value. So how would we retain values inside of an array? Well, that's where something called indices or indexes come in. So I'm going to move um, my cursor back under New England, and we're going to put a f double forward slash here and index values. And then we're going to put the number zero under New Hampshire number one under Vermont, two under Maine, three under Massachusetts, 
four for Rhode Island and five for Connecticut. Now, might be saying, well, wait a minute. There's six different names. Why didn't we start with one? When we're when programming languages look at index values or indices, we always start with zero. Uh, we'll explain that later on in the course, but for now, just know that each position starts with zero and then the next data piece is index one and so on. So we could do the same thing now for grades, index values, So 91 is at 0, 100 is at 1, 88 is 2, 95 is 3, 4, 98 is 5, and item 6 is 100. Okay, so I want to store that or save that. And in essence, we now have created a data type, um, or excuse me, a, a data method called an array by using the const keyword we named it new england and now we were able to store not just one value but six different values related to that name in much the same fashion we were able to establish an array called grades using the const keyword and now those grades might be related to one class or one test or so on and because of its relationship, we might be looking at seven different students, student zero all the way to student six. And now, instead of establishing seven different variable names, grade one, grade student one, grade student two, and so on, we can condense that and put that into array. So that is the benefits of an array. Okay, so that's setting up arrays, and now we could actually retrieve some of that information. Let's use, let's create another variable called state. If I could spell it, let state equal. And now if I want to retrieve one of the states from the array of New England, I use the word New England, the array name, and then with the square brackets again, if I just put in two and then semicolon, that will basically take, now remember, in the order here, we're looking for index two. So New Hampshire is zero, Vermont is one. This will assign the string main to the variable state. So again, we're getting that from New England index two. We could also use the um, let student two equal grades, then the square brackets and one. And again, let's go up to the Array of grades, notice it's highlighted up here. Index value one, in essence now, line 48, is going to take the grade of 100 and assign it to student two. All right, let's save that. We're going to copy that into a REPL in a moment. So that is arrays and how we organize or access them. So remember, we set up the variable name uh, keyword with const. We name the array, assignment variable or assignment value equals, gets the value of, and then we use the square brackets. And then inside of those square brackets, we separate the values with commas. All right, now, arrays are a unique variable because they are treated like an object. And because of that, objects have their own properties and methods or blocks of code that come with the actual fact that you have created an array. So I'm going to move my cursor here and I'm going to type these out here and then we're going to copy them into the REPL in a minute and actually see them in action. So New England square bracket or no, excuse me, 
New England dot length semicolon. Okay. And I want to tab two forward slashes. This sets or returns the number of elements in an array. Okay, so basically what's happening here is the, the object, the array object is now entitled New England. And this convention you will see frequently in many, many different programming languages, object dot, and then a program related to that object, a block of code that basically says, run this block of code, and we'll get into functions and methods in a future uh, video, but length now has some code behind it that will basically count the number of items in New England. And even though indices are from 0 to 5, this still will return 6. Okay, a couple of other common methods and properties of arrays. Dot push. Notice we put inside of the parentheses a state New York, the string data type New York in quotes. Push will add this new element to the end of an array, and it will also return the new length. So it adds New York into the array and then will return 7 as the length and not 6. Pop, pop will remove the last element of an array and return that element. So New England.pop, after we added New York on, will then remove New York, that was the last element, and then return 6 again. Index of this Rhode Island, comma 0, searches the array New England for an element and returns its position. Okay, so that's a quick look at some basic methods. Let's come on over to our W3Schools friends, go all the way down to JS Arrays. <clears throat> and again, this is a quick reference, very basic reference, but to how an array can be established. As we mentioned, why use them, how to create them, item one, two, separated by commas. Um, note here, that this con the array cars is still the same thing, but now they're doing a uh, single line for each item, closing out the array with the square bracket here. That's also customary. Um, or you could create a default const cars equals and no nothing inside of the square brackets and then individually add items 0, 1, and 2, Saab, Volvo, and BMW later. Okay, um, there's another way to create um, arrays with the keyword new. We'll get to that later, but again, there really is no need to do that. Just simply use the array literal method we've been using. Um, accessing array elements, changing, and so on. They are objects, so they have properties and characters characteristics and methods that come with them. The length property is the first one we looked at and it returns the length of an array, which is the number of array elements, which is always one more than that last index. If we come down to here, array methods, here there's a bunch of different methods. We highlighted push and pop from this section here. So it explains that here. So these are what additional methods that come with the object array that you could use on any array you set up. And then finally, the one we um, left off with was index of, and so we have the array name first, New England dot 
then the method index of, and notice even the method here is in lower camel case, O is capitalized. And then you have two what we call parameters or, or necessary items to run this method. This will come later on with functions, but we have the item which is required. What do you want to search for? And the start, notice the start is optional. The default is zero, but you could start at any index. Well, if we go back to hours, we were searching for zero. So this is going to return the position of four where Rhode Island is located. All right. So at this point, we're going to head on over to the REPL and mess around with arrays a little bit. But that is the basics that we want to take into now. We just want to have an awareness of there is an ability, there's an, a construct where we could save multiple items that are related to the same name or variable like New England or grades. And that is the power of arrays. So let's head on over to our REPL. All right, I'm going to go up to view... And we want layout and vertical split. And I'm going to copy some of this information here. Let's move this a little higher here and open up our new immediate window. There's our REPL. And we're going to actually <clears throat> bring in our code so we've established const for new england we have grades array set up and so on we want to stay in the REPL, so i'm going to hit shift enter and now if we let's see okay we could console dot log and inside of here we could put new england square brackets and let's put in five we want to go outside of the parentheses close our thought shift enter here console dot log and let's put in grades square brackets and let's pull in index zero okay so we've got our new england array grades array set up let's actually console.log so shift enter again the variable state shift enter one more time console.log and let's pull in student number two okay so let's anticipate what's going to happen here console.log new england index five should be Connecticut. So that should be our first to print out. Console.log grades at index zero, we should retrieve the grade of 91. Console.log state, we have to go and find out how, what we assign state to. State was the New England array at index two, which is the third state in Maine. So we should have Connecticut, 91 main student two now should be grades array at index one which would be 100 let's see if all that plays out so there's our connecticut main 91 and 100 okay i want to copy down one more time here um just Actually, I just want to grab the two arrays. I'm going to go to a new window. Close out of the old one. 
paste our items in, shift enter, and let's see, I want to console.log New England dot length. And let's also copy the other lines in here as well. So, control C, I'm going to hit Shift Enter, Paste, and those are common so that not, will not pick up. So let's see and, and try and anticipate what's going to happen here. Console.log, we're going to display something to the console. We are calling on the New England array and we're calling the property or method length. So we have the last item in the array for New England was Connecticut at index five. That's our sixth state. So that should return six. New England dot push New York should then add to the array New York. Let's see if it returns anything. Pop will then take that New York away and it says it returns something. Let's put this into a console.log because returning something doesn't mean it's going to display it to does not mean it's going to display it to the screen. So we want to capture that here. So let's see if we set that up right. The console.log parentheses are there. Then we have New England push and New York. Let's do the same for the next one. Console.log. Open parentheses. And notice when I highlight the parentheses, it is showing where the opening pair is. So that's for Rhode Island. That's for the actual index of property. And then now I'm closing out the console.log. Let's actually see what happens here. So our first console.log New England.length generated six. There are six different items in the array New England. Our second one, console.log New England.push added New York to the actual array of New England. Now, if we actually called back console.log after that, New England at index six, we would get New York, but it is returning the new length of the New England array, and that's seven. Finally, what's happening with index of? As we said earlier, this is looking for the element Rhode Island searching for any state called Rhode Island in the New England array, and it's returning its location within the array, and that is index four. So this has been a brief look at arrays. It by no means is it a deep dive into arrays, but let's close out of the REPL here and go back up to our main page. Make sure you're saving this. We wanna keep this into our notes. So here is our notes on arrays. They are a method of storing multiple variable items within one name that has some kind of relationship to each other. They are identified by an index value starting with zero. They're separated by commas and they're held within square brackets. Then, we because they are objects, we have the ability to call pre-existing properties like length and methods like push pop and index of that might have some purpose in our search for example or program of whatever case um, and they will manipulate change and or retrieve information for us on the array new england or any array so that's length push pop and index of there are many more as we looked at but that's it for the basics of arrays so now we have a couple of different ways to store digital information. We have our variables, which will set aside a small amount of, a small piece of memory and store one value. 
That value could be any of the data types that we mentioned. And now we have a little more of a complex method of storing multiple values to one name, and that's arrays. I appreciate you coming along. We will see you in the next one, everyone.